Hi there, gastric balloon friends. How are you doing? It's me, Lindsay. Hi there. And I wanted to put together a cohesive whole about the gastric balloon experience. And so I had wanted to do um, 10 things that I want you to know. If you are thinking about getting a gastric balloon, if you've got a gastric balloon now, or if you have one and it will be coming out soon. So um, for those of you who haven't been kind of following the journey, um, I am 38 years old. I have three small boys. Um, I have six, three, and, and one, or 18 months. And um, yeah, I got my gastric balloon 10 months ago today. So today is the 15th of December and I got my gastric balloon at 191 pounds. <clears throat> now I am five foot seven ish. Um, that's my basketball height. So, um, 191 pounds to start. And then I was massively sick the whole entire time. So, um, whilst I was sick that time, I went all the way down to 126 pounds. <laughs> so that was 64 pounds that I lost. Um, in the span of five months, I requested that they remove the balloon early because it was getting kind of kind of out of control. <laughs> and um, since then, in the five months that it has been gone, I actually have put some weight back on, um, obviously, because, well, gee, uh, I can eat now. And um, so I've put 18 pounds back on and I and I generally am right at around that 145 ish, um, which is where I find that I am the most comfortable if you will. So, um, so yeah, I had wanted to give you the 10 things that I wish I had known that I want you to know. So number one, getting, having all of this gastric balloon stuff, it's not easy. You may feel like you're taking like the easy way out or people might accuse you of, of, you know, taking it easy there. There is nothing easy about having a gastric balloon. You might like me, be massively sick the entire time. And, um, and that sucks. Um, also, uh, financially it's, it's not easy. A lot of the questions that I get, um, to my channel is how much did you pay for your gastric balloon? I am, I'm here in the United States and, um, here's another hard thing. It's not covered by insurance, at least here in the States. It's not, I'm not sure if elsewhere it would be, um, not like a gastric bypass or a sleeve. Um, and here in this area, it costs between $5,000 to $8,000. And I came right smack dab in the middle of that. So, um, so yeah, it's not easy having a gastric balloon. So you're not cheating. I promise you're not because <laughs> it's not easy. Any, any sort of weight loss, any sort of like lifestyle change, it's not easy. So anybody who thinks that or says that to you, tell them to stuff it because they don't know what they're talking about. So that's number one. So number two, who can get a gastric balloon? Now, there are three different types that at least I know of. There is the Orbera gastric balloon, which is what I got. There is the Obalon gastric balloon series, which is like this giant horse pill that you swallow. Um, that was just approved here in the States like a year ago. So I didn't, I, that was not an option really for me. And then the reshape balloon, which is a three-step series. Supposedly it's supposed to be easier on the system. I don't know, but the surgeon that I chose did Orbera. So that's what I had. And, um, so here's the thing about a gastric balloon. If you want a gastric balloon and you have the money Chances are you do can have a gastric balloon. It's like Oprah, you get a gastric balloon and you get a gastric balloon. I don't know if that's good, bad, or indifferent. As long as your body mass index or BMI is around that 30 mark, um, they will give you a balloon. Um, so, so yeah, they'll give it to you if you want it, I think, for the most part. So um, side effects of the gastric balloon. Now here, now here's the, the body of what you're going to be living with when you have a gastric balloon, at least this was in, in, in my experience. So the top three side effects are these acid, gas, losing your hair. So, um, so yes, acid, the worst heartburn of my life. I gave birth to three ginormous ginormous children. And the, the acid reflux that I experienced during my gastric balloon placement was hideous, horrible, 
bleh, and I'll tell you what to do about that here in a second. So that was number one. That acid is no lie. Um, number two, gas. There is nothing nastier than a gastric balloon burp. They are literally, they are toxic, noxious, weaponized burps. They are so awful. And the whole world will know if you have to burp because it is that bad. Like there, it's super gross. That's just, you know, <laughs> this is just bad. So, um, so that's number two. Number three, you might like me go bald. Um, when I started this, I, I, I've never had like awesome, like sweet hair. I'm, I just never have. But when I started, I had hair down, I don't know, past my shoulders. I don't know. Um, I don't really care about hair cause mine is not that great. So, and not only that, I've been bleaching it blonde since I was about 15 years old and this is my natural hair color and it was a surprise to me, but you can see here, like all of these little tiny baby hairs that are coming back in. Took five months to get those bad boys in, but, but yeah, so, um, I did have to chop off my hair because I had literally bald spots. You could see through my hair in certain spots. It was, it was hot. I was good looking as a bald lady. So, uh, not really, but, um, so yeah, what we can do about those side effects. So that's number four. So here are my tips for you with those side effects. Number one, in that acid, you need to find a daily acid reducer, whether it is Pepsid or Zantac or something like that, that you take every single day. And then you will also Please, please get these things, the Tums, the Gas X, the chewable little doodads that you can, you know, take to, to kind of ramp that acid down. And it also helps with the burps. Um, nothing will save you from burps, just so you know. I mean, there's just not a whole hell of a lot you can do about it, but there it is. Um, so yeah, those, those burps will kind of screw you. But here's the other thing. Once you figure out what works for you, put it in your purse. Put it in your car, put it in your briefcase, put it on your person and have it at all times. Have that and have small snacks that you can f actually eat. Um, and I will go over what to eat here in just a few minutes. But um, so the hair loss or if you if your nail, I have this like I have hangy skin now. <laughs> so fly. Anyway, um, there's not a whole lot you can do when you lose a whole lot of weight real fast. A lot of times you just lose your hair. It's just, it's just something that happens. And the only thing that I can recommend to you is take vitamins. Now, um, swallowing a horse pill, I'm sorry, you're not going to be able to do that. It's not going to happen for you. Probably it, it couldn't, there was no way. So they have these little chewable gummy, like biotin supplements. They're delicious. They're like a snack. <laughs> and then I also took a multivitamin by Alive, I think. And it's they're like a little treat. So my husband and I, every day, we're like, ooh, did you take your treats today? And it's like, ooh, yay. It's like a little snack. So um, so yeah, that is that is my recommendations about what to do about you know that those those side effects. So that leads us into your diet. Now, I am the worst person to ask what to eat whilst the balloon is in because I sucked at food. I just did. Honestly, I ate what it was that I could. Does that make sense grammatically? I don't think so. But here's here it is. I should have been eating skinless chicken breasts. I should have been eating, I don't know, an avocado. So the problem with when you have a gastric balloon, which is in my case, it was like the size of a grapefruit in your stomach things that had a lot of bulk or like fiber content literally hit the stomach, came right back up. So anything that was like a whole grain, like some, you know, oatmeal or, you know, salad green, something bulky and hearty or whatever, it was not going to happen. So honestly, between you, me and the world, it was like one chicken nugget because I had to go through to get, you know, something for the kids on my way to life. And yeah, so it was the one chicken nugget or the handful of barbecued potato chips. So yeah, I sucked. And because I hate, 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 hate protein shakes. I hate them. I think they're gross, but yeah, they sucked. So, um, that is going to lead us to diet after. Now this, I will cover in you know, number nine, 
now what? Um, because the diet portion of, of my, of my life now is, is involved and boring, um, honestly. So, um, I will let you know kind of what you do afterwards. So yes, my, um, my advice to you while the balloon is in, find the things that you can eat. A handful of almonds. Um, I could eat like jerky, like beef jerky and stuff and really, really tiny portions of, of stuff. Um, because yeah, I just couldn't eat a lot, which, which, you know, Hey, that's what it was for the balloon. So, okay. Now exercise. I get a lot of questions about what did I do or what do I do for exercise while the balloon was in I wasn't doing squat. I was doing squat doobie. Zero. Because um, there was no way that I had the extra energy to run after the kids and, you know, make life happen for this household and, and go to the gym or work out. I just, I didn't have the energy to do it. And um, yeah, uh, but I will say once the balloon came out, or towards the end of the balloon thing. And once the balloon came out, I found my my thing, the one thing that you might find that you don't hate. My thing is Pure Bar, B-A-R-R-E. Um, I go at six in the morning, which really sucks. I wake up at five to get there. But it's the one thing that I, I can deal with, that I can do. Um, so I started, so I started like walking and stuff like that. Once my energy levels got a little bit better when the balloon was in, then I started attending pure bar classes once I, you know, right towards the end of, of my gastric balloon placement. And let me tell you something, working out when you are 40, 50, 60 pounds lighter is so much easier. It is so much easier to do anything when you're not carrying around like a six-year-old on your back all the time. So, um, so yeah, it was, it was amazing how much easier and how much more enjoyable working out and exercising is when you're not like out of breath going up the stairs. So that's, that's kind of nice. Um, so this is going to lead me into number seven. And this in my opinion, is the most important thing that I can impart to anybody about losing weight. You need to check in with your brain because chances are, unless you have a physical reason, you know, your thyroid is off, you've got, you know, some, some physical um, malady, if you will, that is causing you to either gain weight or be unable to lose weight, chances are you got a demon in your brain. Um, and this, I, I say that lightly, but it's true. So you need to check in with your mental health. You just do. And it's, God, it's uncomfortable and it sucks, but you have to do it because if you do not address the reasons behind your weight gain or the reason that you are sabotaging yourself, if you do not get in touch with that, nothing will work. So you need to get real with yourself and figure it out. And I'm going to tell you something that I told my husband and he thought it was super sad. And I guess, I don't know, maybe it is sad, but um, I told my sisters and I thought they would agree with me and, the, and they thought it was sad too, but he, maybe you can, maybe you can feel me here. When I had my gastric balloon and I did not realize this until it was out, I had never ever in my life felt so free from, from my, my, deep seated, long term issues. Um, you know, I wasn't like a fat kid or anything, but I felt like I was fat, like from the time I was, you know, like five, which is pathetically sad. Um, but when I physically could not eat and I knew that weight was going to come off, I had, it was, it was a freedom and a lightness that I can barely explain. And there are times when I'm like, I, not even times, all the time. I'm like, God, I wish I could have that balloon back, even though I was sick as a dog. And I, you know, and I looked, I looked terrible at the end, like bald spots back here. And you can see like all the ribs in here. Um, but yeah, I, so I had so much more space in my brain where I wasn't worrying about what I was eating. Was I moving enough? Yada, 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 yada. And it really it's really sad, really, I guess, you know, that 
I needed to get real with the reasons behind my self-sabotage or, you know, my, you know, my issues, because if you don't, if you don't confront it, it's going to bite you in the ass. It's going to come back. It's going to bite you in the butt. So get real with yourself. Get real with your demons. So yeah, that's, that's number seven. Rewind, take that back in. Okay. So, okay. Number eight. So pre-balloon, during balloon, post-balloon, you need a plan. You need a plan that you either make with your doctor, with your nutritionist, with yourself, with your family. Before the balloon, you need to get a physical exam. I did not have one. I, I you know, my, it, it's a little sketch, but um, you need to really get in, you know, in, involved with your doctor so that you know what to expect when you have the balloon. So you need to figure out what you can eat, when you can eat it, all of that stuff. And, um, and then once you have that balloon, you know, you can implement that plan. If you can't eat blank, then you have another option, you know, so you're not starving yourself a or B being, you know, violently ill all the time. So, so you need that plan. And then once that balloon comes out, you need to have a plan in place for your diet, your exercise, and you need to make yourself that priority because if you don't, the weight will come back. And honestly, um, I wanted the balloon as like a jumping off place, you know, so that it could kickstart weight loss. But, you know, I've subsequently, once the balloon came out, needed to put healthy weight back on, which is, which has been hard. You know, it's hard to watch the scale creep back up. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm working on it. I'm, I'm living with it. And, um, you know, I knew that I needed to invest time and, and, and have a plan for myself for when the sucker came out so that I could continue the healthy lifestyle that I wanted. So number nine, now what? Now what? Now that the balloon is out, what do you do? Now, here is where there is the least amount of information that I have been able to find because the procedure is fairly new, A. And B, um, it sucks, kind of, um, what you do next. Because once that balloon comes out, your ability to eat is 100% completely restored. Now, if you didn't address your mental stuff and have a plan, unhealthy weight will creep back up, which is what happened to me immediately after the balloon was removed. Because I was like, ha ha, I can eat now. I'm going to eat all the things, whether or not they're good. I will eat them all because I can. Um, so, so those first like eight pounds or so were, were probably not healthy pounds, but hey, whatever. You live, you learn, you move on. So, um, so yes, what I have devised for, you know, the kind of now what phase is, okay, Number one, here's here are a couple tips. I I drank the Kool Aid and I got a Fitbit. So this you know it's interesting because I thought this would be like being in jail, um, but it's not. It's actually kind of fun. It's kind of a fun thing. And you know, hey, now I don't have to look at my phone every single time I want to know what time it is. So that's kind of fun. That's nice. Um, you know, um, also I have to carve out that that me time, if you will which isn't really, you know, me time, um, because I have to do it at six in the morning is haul my ass out of bed, um, at, you know, some ungodly hour to drive to Pure Bar and do my, do my hour. And, um, I go three or four times a week. It's usually more like three, but, but yeah. So if you don't really check in with yourself and have that plan, so number seven, um, and number eight, the kind of now what will bite you in the ass. So, so yeah, that's that. Which leads us to number 10. Number 10, would I do it again? That is a big fat hell yeah, all day long. I would totally do it again. I'm not saying like it's the best decision I ever made because I've made some pretty decent decisions. You know, you know, I've got husband and kids and, you know, Fun, fun, life is good, but I would absolutely 100% say yes, I would totally do it again. Um, 
it's it's been a really good experience for me personally um, to really invest some time and space into myself. And I'm sure a lot of you who are, you know, who are watching this, who have it, uh, a gastric balloon, who are thinking about it. Um, it's about time you do something for yourself because we do, we, as, as people, we pour so much of who we are and, and, and so much of our energy into our, into our work or our friends or our family, our children, our, you know, our communities our whatever. And, when you come in last place all the time, there's, there's, there's nothing good there because, you know, when you feel disgusting and I did, I, I felt repulsive. Look, that's no way to, that's no way to live. So I don't feel repulsive anymore. <laughs> Yay. So yeah, I would totally do it again. Um, so yeah, um, it makes me think, uh, this morning, um, my, my three-year-old, asked me to, to get him some milk. And so I got him his milk and I gave it to him. And, and I swear to God, he called me his bitch, <laughs> which is kind of true because I feel like that I'm all my kids, you know, whatever. But, um, but yeah, so, so you got to stop being everybody's bitch and do something for you. So yeah, those are my, those are my 10 things. And I will, I will certainly, um, oh, there are before and afters that I'm going to put, um, on the video, but yeah, so you can see, <laughs> how far we've come. And, um, and yeah, I'll continue to do videos with like tips and tricks and stuff like that. So I really hope that you, um, continue to watch the videos because this is like free therapy for me. So, um, it's nice when I see that somebody has like subscribed because it's like, yay, somebody gives a shit about what I think or what I'm doing or yeah. Cause sometimes I feel like nobody gives a shit what I do, but anyway, um, so thank you. Thank you so very much. Um, hope everybody has a happy holiday and, um, and I really appreciate your, your feedback and your kindness and, and thank you so much. So yay. Thank you. And uh, happy holidays. Okay. Bye.